Welcome to week 14 with Mrs. Bibb. I know that says Algebra 2 Honors. Remember, the lessons for Honors and regular Algebra 2 are the same. We just move a little faster and go sometimes just a little bit deeper in my Honors classes. We have exceeded fall of 2020. I'm sure for many of my classes it will be January 2021 before we even get or maybe February 2021 before we even get to these lessons. Please fill in your table of contents. Complete your warm up. For my regular Algebra 2, your warm up will be a little bit different. You will need Student Journal 50, 51, 53, and 54. So please make sure to get those out. First thing we're going to be doing is adding and subtracting complex numbers. So when you add and subtract complex numbers, let me show you an example here. Please make sure to write down these examples where it says notes. I will look for these. I'm going to do three examples. To add complex numbers. Oh, and complex numbers just have that silly looking I there. I is the complex unit. You'll see that in just a moment. I just want to start with adding and subtracting and multiplying. To add complex numbers, you just add like terms. Add together 5 and 8. That's 13. Add together 2i and negative 2i would be 0i. But we never put 0i. We would just put 13 as my answer. To subtract complex numbers, let's do that same problem. Let's just do it on the, we'll be not creative and do the same problem all the way across. You are going to subtract like terms. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. 2i minus negative 2i. 2i minus negative 2i. That's the same thing as 2i plus 2i, which is positive 4i. This is called complex form. A plus B I is complex form. The I should always be second. And then let's multiply. 5 plus 2I times 8 minus 2I. You should distribute. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times negative 2I is negative 10I. 2i times 8 is positive 16i. 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Combine like terms, 40, negative 10i plus 16i is positive 6i. Negative 4, one thing I need to tell you, it's one big fact you need to know. Anytime you see i squared, replace it with negative 1. So I see I squared, I'm going to replace that with negative 1. I need to multiply those, 40 plus 6i plus 4. I still have like terms, 40 plus 4 is 44 plus 6i. The other fact that you need to know is the fact that the square root of negative 1, in lessons past I've said you can't take the square root of a negative, but in this set of complex numbers, the square root of negative 1 is i. Now, let's look at 1 through 6. Hopefully, you see that all of those have a negative under the radical. That's how I want you to start. I want you to take out that negative from under the radical. The first step should be just take that negative out. I've created an equivalent expression. The square root of negative 1 times the square root of 49 is the square root of negative 49. But I've taken out that square root of negative 1. And as mentioned just a second ago, the square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 49 is 7. i times 7 is 7i. Seven That's the answer. For question 2, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 4 is 2. i times 2 is 2i. Two when I look at number 3, 
45 is not a perfect square, but I know, I'll write down the factors in just a moment. I know 45 has a perfect square in it. One times 45, two won't divide evenly into 45. Three times 15, I haven't encountered a perfect square yet. Four does not divide evenly into 45. Five divides evenly, in, evenly into 45 nine times. Nine is that perfect square. So when I write that next step, I'm going to go ahead and put the square root of nine times the square root of five. Now check to make sure you've done this properly. When you multiply this row, and I'm gonna grab my highlighter really quick, really quickly, I should say. This row, well, that's not a highlighter. Pardon me. This row here should multiply to give you this row or this beginning product square root of negative 45. Negative one times nine times 45. You should have the same answer. That is the square root of negative five. So just make sure you check that before you proceed when you're doing these. And now the square root of negative one is I. The square root of nine is three. I can't do anything with the square root of five. I times three is three I times the square root of five. That's the answer to number three. Number four, 100 is a perfect square, but it's got this negative two out front. I just keep the negative two, negative two times, take the negative out from under the radical, and I do expect to see this on your paper, and then negative one times 100 is negative 100. Simplify each of these things, negative two is what it is. The square root of negative one is I, the square root of 100 is 10. Negative two times I times 10 is negative 20 I. Do the same thing with number five, six times the square root of negative one times the square root of 121. Six times I times 11. Six times I is six I. Six I times 11 is 66 I. For number five, 75 is not a perfect square. I'm gonna write down the factors of 75 after I write down the square root of negative one. Factors of 75, I think we did that maybe last week. One times 75, two doesn't divide evenly into 75. Three divides evenly into 75, 25 times. Four does not divide evenly, five does. And I think that's it. And the biggest and only perfect square I see is 25. And remember, this all has to be equivalent. The square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3 should be negative square root of negative 75, and it is. Simplify all the things that you can simplify. 5 times square root of negative 1 is I. The square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3. Multiply outside of the radical. My final answer is going to be 25I times the square root of 3. For this, I'd like for you to pause the video, and I'd like for you to add, subtract, and multiply and get your answers. I'm going to quickly do those and probably do them without sound. I may say something as I need to, but probably do them without sound. After I do that, I'm going to classify my results, so I will talk once I get to there. So I'm going to write quickly. You're welcome to, like I said, pause, do these, and then come back and check.
Don't forget when you see a squared, just substitute negative one in. Last one. Directions ask me to classify the result as a real number or an imaginary number. If it's an imaginary number, specify it if it is pure imaginary. And I call these complex numbers, I don't just call them imaginary. Okay. Negative 9 plus i has an i, so that's a complex number. It's not pure imaginary. You could also write imaginary. When it has an i, it is an imaginary number, so this one is imaginary because of the i. It's not pure because it has a real part. Number 11 does not have a real part. The a plus b i. This is your real part, and this is your imaginary part. Together, they make a complex number. So this one is a pure imaginary number. Number 12 is just an imaginary number. Number 13 is just an imaginary number. And number 14 is just a real number. And that's how you do those problems. I should have started with this particular page. I'm not sure why they weren't in that order, but that's okay. We'll go from, from here. i discuss some of the important things first, and that's, that's, all, that's all that matters. Okay, so complex numbers. A complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. And what does that real part look like? Well, that real part could have rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, irrational numbers. It's very important that you know what all these things are. So let's look at real numbers. Real numbers and the abbreviation for real numbers is an R. The abbreviation for complex numbers is a C. Please make sure to write these down because we're going to use those abbreviations um, in our classroom to help um, us from having to write those all completely out. Complex numbers um, are going to be imaginary numbers. I'm going to use C for imaginary numbers as well. Okay, so let's talk about real numbers. We have rational, which you use the letter Q, and we have irrational, and you use the letter I for irrational. Um, irrational numbers, pi is an irrational number. And then any radical that does not come out as a whole number, so if this number here is not a perfect square, we could say perfect cube also, the cube root of 5 would be an irrational number. But any radical that would give you a decimal for an answer, that's an irrational number. Now rational numbers. Rational numbers are integers. We use the letter Z for integers. The definition for an integer is the set of whole numbers and their opposites. So the integers are written this way. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. The set of whole numbers and their opposites. Whole numbers, we use the letter W, and whole numbers include 0, and none of these are fractions or decimals. And then natural numbers, we use n, and that would be the natural way we count. They're also called the counting numbers. If you see a fraction or a decimal, that's just a rational number. It doesn't have its own letter, it's just a Q.
decimals and fractions are just real and rational. That's it. Okay, so what we're going to do here on the bottom, if we were in the classroom, we'd work with a partner and have you all decide um, what sets of numbers each of these belong to. But since we're not in the classroom, I'll just go through this with you. Here's what I would do. The square root of 9, that is a whole number. That is 3. What sets does this belong to? Well, this is a real number, so I would put R. Is it a rational or an irrational number? Well, it's not a radical, and it's not pi, so it's rational. Under rational, is it an integer? Would it belong in the list of integers? Yes, so I would put a Z. Is it a whole number? Yes, I would. Put W for whole. Is it a natural number? Yes, it's a natural number, the, a natural counting number. Next, what I would do um, for letter B is I take the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Okay, is 0 a real number? Yes, it is. Is it a rational number or an irrational number? It is rational. Is 0 an integer? Yes, it's in the list of integers, so I put a Z. Is 0 a whole number? Yes, it's a whole number, so I put a W. Is 0 a natural number? No, it's not a natural number. So those are the four letters that would go with letter B. Letter C, this negative means I have negative 1 times the square root of 4, which means I have negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. Negative 2, is that a real number? Yes, it's a real number. Is it a rational or an irrational number? Well, negative 2 is a rational number. Is negative 2 an integer? Yes, it is an integer. It's a negative whole number. It's an integer. Is negative 2 in the list of whole numbers? No, negative 2 is not a whole number, so you don't put a W. Is negative 2 a natural number? No, it is not. So those three letters go with negative square root of 4. Letter D, that looks weird, square root of 4 ninths. Remember, you can write it like this. Square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3. Is 2 thirds a real number? Yes, it is. It does not have an I, so it's a real number. Is 2 thirds rational or irrational? To be irrational, it has to be pi or have a square root or a cube root or any root that doesn't come out as a whole number. So it is not an irrational number. It is rational. Is 2 thirds an integer? No. It's not a whole number or the opposite of a whole number. Is 2 thirds a whole number? No. Is 2 thirds a natural number? No. So the square root of 4 ninths is only real and rational. The square root of 2, is that a real number? Yes. The square root of 2, is it a rational number or is it an irrational number? Well, the square root of 2 would not come out as a whole number, so it's just irrational. Letter F, the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1, is that real? Remember, we break them apart like this. This is i times 1, or just i. No, it's not real, so it's complex. There's the answers to a through f. For this particular page, if we were in the classroom, I would give you five minutes to work with your partner to match up these letters, lowercase letters, A through F, with the answers, capital letters, A through F. If you want to pause the video and take the time to do that right now, some students can be pleasantly surprised that they can actually match some of these correctly and very well. Here's what I would do. I would start with the first one. I would add 4 x equals 4, x squared, excuse me, take the square root of 4. We learned in a prior lesson that when you take the square root of both sides that you would put plus or minus 2. And when you look down here, capital F would match letter A. I would subtract 1 from both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Put that plus or minus, I see a negative sign under that radical, so I have to put the square root of negative 1 times 1. So x will equal plus or minus i times 1, 
which is x equals plus or minus i. And that is letter A. For the next one, I'll add one to both sides. x squared will equal 1. Take the square root of both sides. x will equal plus or minus the square root of 1 is 1. And that is letter E. Letter D, subtract 4 from both sides. x squared would equal negative 4. Take the square root of both sides. x would equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. Take that negative out from under the radical. x will equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1 is i times the square root of 4 is 2. So x will equal plus or minus 2i. And that would be letter D. For letter E, add 9 to both sides. x squared would equal 9. Take the square root of both sides. x would equal plus or minus 3. And that's letter C. Obviously, we know this is going to be letter B, but let's talk about how you get that. x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides. Does that make you feel like you're in school? x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. x will equal plus or minus i times 3, best written as x equals plus or minus 3i. And that's how you do those problems. I hope that you did well on that. Let's look at the next set of problems. Same sort of thing. We're going to solve. We're going to get our x squared by itself. We'll just jump right in and do that. To get x squared by itself, we would subtract 25 first. Negative 25 will equal 5x squared. Next, I will divide by 5 x squared will equal negative 5. Next, I will take the square root of both sides. So x will equal, put your plus or minus, take that negative out from under that radical, plus or minus i times the square root of 5. You don't need that little dot there. You can leave it off. Um, 5 is not a perfect square, so you have to leave it under the radical. Next, for number 17, I'm going to add 10 to both sides. x squared is going to equal negative 8. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. x will equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And I'm just thinking ahead. 8 has the factors of 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. 4 is a perfect square, so I've got to use that 4 times 2. Simplify all those radicals I have, so plus or minus i, square root of negative 1 is i, square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of 2. Make that look better and more simplified. Plus or minus i times 2 is 2i, two times the square root of 2. 18, I am going to subtract 4 thirds x squared from both sides. Negative one-third minus four-thirds is negative five-thirds x squared. And one-fifth is over there by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So negative five x squared equals one, one over five times three over one is three over five. I could divide both sides, and I, I will. I'll just divide by negative 5, although it looks weird. But you're doing 3 fifths divided by negative 5. Think about when you learn to multiply and divide fractions. 3 fifths times the reciprocal of negative 5 over 1, which would be negative 1 over 5. Multiply straight across. x squared is going to equal... 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 5 times 5 is 25. Take the square root of both sides. So x is going to equal, and I'm going to bust out all that square root away from each other, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3 in the numerator, just to save us a step, and the square root of 25 in the denominator. Let me go over here. x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1 is i times the square root of 3 
over the square root of 25 is 5. And that's my answer to number 18. You're ready to do your week 14 practice, and that is to do those problems that are listed there from your textbook. You'll have your assessment at some time in the future, and then there's your checklist to make sure that you have completed everything properly. And your answers to your practice are in the back of the textbook, and your warm-up answers are included there. I hope you have a wonderful day, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything that you need help with.